I'm not typically a big fan of like the roguelike, roguelike, however it is that you say it, genre of games. I appreciate them. They are fun. They just don't usually click with me, okay? But then you have God of War Ragnarok that releases a free DLC roguelike, roguelite mode for the game, and it's incredible. Ladies and gents, my name is Francisco. Let's talk about it. God of War Valhalla is free downloadable content that serves as an epilogue to the main story of God of War Ragnarok, okay? You find yourself taking control of Kratos and Mimir in this journey once more, and it's just Kratos and just Mimir. There is no Atreus or no other people joining you in the fights here. You get to the small little island, it turns out that you've been invited to Valhalla to take part in their challenges and trials. There is not just roguelike elements to the game, or to the DLC, I'm sorry, but there's actually a very substantial story going on here. But before we get into the story part of Valhalla, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the actual gameplay loop in Valhalla. So you start off on the shore. The shore basically serves as this little central hut of the game where you're able to prepare for each subsequent run through the Valhalla challenges and trials. You step in through the door of light and you're off in your very first room where you're gonna fight some random enemies and random, random assortments. You beat them, you clear them out and you have a chest and you're able to you know, go ahead and collect whatever rewards in there, usually in the form of some sort of a power up, uh, either a, a, a runic ability, uh, stat increases or other different perks that can kind of benefit you throughout your run. You leave this room and you enter a random sanctuary. Okay, now a sanctuary is going to look like any of the other realms that we've been through throughout God of War 2018 and Ragnarok. And in the sanctuary, you're not going to fight anything. You're basically going to have chests that you can open up to collect points that you can then spend once you go back to the shore. And you're going to have yourself a selection of doors that you can and cannot go through each door after some after a couple of runs now will have a certain symbol on the door itself each one of these symbols corresponds with the type of rewards you're going to get for clearing that room after you clear enough of these rooms in a given sanctuary you then have to face one of valhalla's chosen okay this could be in the form of a prior boss a very tough elite version of an enemy or just an onslaught of enemies at once that you just have to fight and defeat and once you've done that you're able to ascend to the next level in valhalla in this second level of valhalla things get different things become different the challenges are a little bit different yes you're going from one sanctuary to the next you're going from one challenge room or challenge realm to the next but and, and mind you i'm going to be showing you some spoilers here for example they add some tweaks in to a couple of these there to one of these areas so you have a timer and you have to kill about three depending on what run you're on four maybe even five of different valhalla's chosen as the timer bar depletes it increases in level. So it depletes to level one and it restarts again at level two. Every time that timer bar resets to a new level, the enemies that you fight become more and more difficult. So you're pressed for time, which means that you have to be very deliberate about what loadout you're going with, what perks you're choosing, what glyphs you're equipping, what shield, what rage meter you're gonna, what, you know, what rage style you're gonna be using. And you have to be on your A game when it comes to the combat in God of War Ragnarok. Which, by the way, it, the combat in Valhalla, obviously, is, is literally an extension of the combat in Ragnarok, which is an evolution slightly of the combat in God of War 2018. The combat is incredible, okay? The game it just has such a great combat flow to it. I don't really want to over elaborate on that. I'm just going to hear, I'm just here to tell you that if you enjoyed how 2018's God of War played and you enjoyed how God of War Ragnarok played, you're going to feel very familiar with how Valhalla plays because it plays the exact same way and it feels so gosh darn good. At certain key points of the run, Kratos is going to be faced with a very big moment of his past. And sometimes Kratos just isn't ready to face that moment just yet. So Valhalla kicks him out and has him restart all the way from the beginning once more. So not only will dying in the middle of a run restart you all the way from the beginning, but there are also story points throughout this DLC that will force restart your run at the very beginning. Of course, kind of unfortunate to a degree, but nevertheless, because the game is just so much fun to play, it's not been any sort of an issue for me having to replay through the same run over and over and over again. And granted, the sanctuaries, the rooms, the enemy composition, the types of things that you fight, the elements that are involved, some of the buffs and debuffs that are involved do rotate and change out from one run to the next. So it keeps things very interesting and it keeps you on your toes. 
Uh, so the restarting, as a result, the restarting never really feels like an issue whatsoever because you just never know what you're gonna get. It's like that box of chocolates Forrest Gump constantly talked about. Now, I can't speak to other roguelike games like Returnal or anything like that, even though I did play it for a little bit. But one thing I really appreciated about what Valhalla did here is that it has a like very high risk and high reward system that it implements into your runs after a certain point in the quote unquote story you have this gigantic like pillar that manifests in front of you in front of in the sanctuary that you're currently in and you activate it and it tells you hey you are going to take extra damage if your block is broken during a yellow ring attack for the next four fights for the next four encounters but if you manage to survive these four encounters then at the very bottom of that card because you're going to have an option of two then here is the reward that you're going to get usually in the form of like a major stat increase some sort of awesome runic ability or another different type of buff so some really good and smart implementation of high risk slash high reward uh, elements in this dlc already now one thing that caught me off guard with this dlc first of all the fact that it's free is absolute insanity like this could have easily been dlc that we needed to pay for and the fact that we don't have to pay for it at all and all we have to do is already own god of war ragnarok is absolutely incredible but when we found out at the game awards that it was a roguelike mode okay like i had a good decent understanding of what that was going to be what i was not expecting ladies and gentlemen is the story that has been put into this free downloadable content out of respect for anybody who maybe hasn't gotten a chance to play this yet especially like the first hour or two of this game i'm not going to show you some of the things that go down but all i can tell you is that santa monica did it again like they added in a free dlc to an already amazing inc incredible game added a really fun gameplay loop to it they did an excellent job with the role like elements like absolutely excellent it's fair it's challenging and it's fun so it hits all three for me the story elements y'all are absolutely top tier top shelf top in class s tier it doesn't get any better than this it is an excellent way to continue and somewhat wrap up the story that we left off with once we finished god of war ragnarok some of the things that happened here especially one particular moment early on i had absolutely no expectations for was not ready for it and as much as i want to show you here i won't do it I'm not going to do it because that's some that is a moment that you have to experience for yourself for the very first time. But then the reintroduction of certain elements from the very past, and I'm talking about God of War 1, 2, and 3, the original trilogy of the game, being reintroduced into the modern God of War gameplay. It's it's incredible. It's like an ode to the game. It's it's just paying homage to the legacy of the game itself in a free downloadable content game mode for one of the best games on ps5 to date if you have not played god of war ragnarok now's the time to do it because once you do and you get to play valhalla which you definitely need to you need to beat god of war ragnarok before you play valhalla by the way there's a lot of spoilers for the ragnarok story if you haven't beaten it right so beat ragnarok and play valhalla this is going to go down as like one of my favorite dlcs to have ever been released by any company on any platform ever this is how you do it i don't expect downloadable content to always be free and in this instant i i'm kind of surprised that it's that it is free because we could have easily been charged money for this now would have been okay spending money on this because this is quality content and it's free and it's fun it's challenging and it's fair and it's absolutely amazing and i have spent countless amounts of hours already playing it since it released ladies and gentlemen hope you found the video helpful enjoyable entertaining if you do like the content so far make sure you like and subscribe I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers before the end of 2023 until next time be good to yourselves be good to one another peace out oh, i'm not here to spoil that for you only to help you prepare why because I can. Because for us, fighting occupies the body while our minds work out the rest. Because you're not ready yet. <laughs>